right, good morning. Uh, day two of Inventive Code. I really did not expect to be streaming this whole thing or I really did not plan this. I really just thought of this yesterday at breakfast. So um, yeah, but here we are. Uh, day two, good morning, uh, fans of Lambda Island uh, or friends of Lambda Island, uh, I'd like to say. Um, yeah, so yesterday we set up our project. This is what we have so far. Um, I also created a GitHub repository, Lambda Island AOC 2020, if you want to check uh, those things later on. Um, I should probably show you what I'm doing instead of making the mistake I made yesterday. Uh, so here's the code we created yesterday. Haven't really looked at today's puzzle yet, but I'm just gonna start uh, a namespace for that and check in so we can develop and then let's see what we have. Password philosophy. Your flight departs in a few days from the coastal airport. The easiest way down to the coast from here is via Toboggan. The shop quick keeper at the North Pole, Toboggan Rental Shop. Is that how you pronounce that? Is that a kind of, it's a kind of sled, I guess. Um, Shopkeepers having a bad day. Something's wrong with our computers. We can't log in. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, you ask if you can take a look. Their password database seems to be a little corrupted. Some of the passwords wouldn't have been allowed by the official Toboggan corporate policy that was in effect when they were chosen. To try to debug the problem, they have created a list of passwords and the corporate policy when the password was set. For example, suppose you have the following list. Each line gives the password policy and then the password. The password policy indicates the lowest and highest number of times a given letter must appear for the password to be valid. For example, 13A means that the password must contain A at least one time and at most three times. In the above example, two passwords are valid. The middle password, CDEFG, is not because it's supposed to contain one, two, three Bs and it contains zero Bs. How many passwords are valid according to their policies? Okay, so I already kind of know um, a naive way that we would be able to solve this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab our puzzle input, even though we'll start with the demo input. Uh, so I'm putting those under resources. Puzzle, puzzle input 01.02.text. Uh, uh, 1000. Okay, that does not seem too bad. I think we can still um, solve this without trying to do crazy performance hacks. Um, and then yeah, our sample input is this one. So I guess the, the first thing um, is to parse this, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna, at least for the sample input, split this by new lines. Yeah, so far so good. And then, yeah, let's just do this in line here for now. Uh, let's just do it on one first. Uh, so can I do an RE, uh, and here I often have to think in moment which one I need, but I think RE bind is what we need, uh, which takes the string last. So, I guess it's all like a number of digits, some more digits. I should use real for this. Uh, a character and then whatever else is there. Okay, yeah, that seems 
reasonable. Um, how about if we partial this and map over it? All right. So gonna pull this into a function, parse line, get a string. Um, yeah, so I can do an re find. Now re find, uh, if when you're using these capturing groups, it returns a vector where the first thing is the, the full match, and then you sort of get the individual captured things. So this is min max car password. All right. So let's see if that still works. Can we map here over the parse line? And then And here I'm just going to call first so that it gets the, the because it's a string with a single character. We really just care about the character, and uh, I think it might be convenient later on to have that as a character. Okay, so now we have two numbers, character, and uh, the password. Now, uh, yeah, let's actually just. So now I just have one of these so I can uh, play around with this. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, we want to have some kind of uh, entry OK predicate. Okay, so now we get to the meat of the thing. Let's destructure this again. Okay, so my idea here is that I think we can simply call frequencies uh, on that password string. So frequencies just kind of counts the, the things in a sequence. So say we have this, then that returns a map where we get the frequency of each thing. And then we say get frequencies character, um, and that needs to be between min and max. So entry, okay, entry, that is true. Whereas the second one is supposed to be false, and we get a null pointer exception because there is no b in there so let's put a default on here of zero and that's false and uh, annotate as a collection first so that's fine like the third one so that's index two and this one is true uh, yeah that's a good start let's see if that performs well enough to do the real thing, um, I'm just gonna, I guess, grab this here. Uh, and it's almost the same. We again want to loop over all lines, but instead of just parsing them as longs, so we're gonna call parse line on them. Uh, yeah, don't have IO yet. So I showed this yesterday too, right? So this is this is using um, what is it? How to describe key, comma refactor add missing, which call CLJR add missing lipspec. 
which is part of CLJ Refactor, which under the hood, hood makes use of Unravel Refactor, which has a whole bunch of things, and I only use a couple of them, but sometimes they're, they're just really handy. Um, okay, so we have our input. Let's see. That, that looks like what we would expect. Oh, this is still unbound. Uh, there you go. Okay, so this is input. Okay, and we want to count the number of entries that are okay, uh, I believe. Um, so count filter entry okay on the input. 603. 603. That's the right answer. All right. Uh, and then we can continue with part two. Well, it appears you validated the passwords correctly. They don't seem to be what the official Toblerone corporate authentication system is expecting. The shopkeeper suddenly realizes that he just accidentally explained the password policy rules from his old job at the slack rental place down the street. Happens all the time to me, man. Um, okay, so the official topic and corporate policy actually works a little differently. Each policy actually describes two positions in the password, where one means the first character, two means the second character, and so on. Okay, so it's one index. It's already good to know. Yeah, be careful. The and corporate policies have no concept of index zero. Yeah, they helpfully point that out. Um, exactly one of these positions must contain the given letter. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant for the purpose of policy enforcement. Okay, so 1, 3, A, either 1 or 3 must be A, but not both. So you see in the third example, it's invalid because both C, 2 and 9 contain C, so it's kind of an exclusive or. Okay, um, that doesn't seem too bad. And again, we need to count, right? How many passwords are valid? Uh, so let's make an entry OK2. Okay um, and uh, yeah, let's say we do an nth on the password. Well, it's one index, so we're going to decrement that. Uh, and what sort of, uh, I mean, you can just write it out, but what would be a nice way to write this? Let's um, just say, uh, I mean, we don't really have an exclusive or do we? I know that's a math. Basic part edit edit thing. I have so I'm using like Vim style bindings, and I use um, smaller than and greater than for slurp and barf. Um, this this Emacs config um, you can find it under uh, I believe Lambda I don't know maybe it's still under Plexus Plexus Corgi or Lambda Island Corgi I don't know it's eventually gonna move to Lambda Island Corgi uh, oh yeah thanks Vincent uh, Vincent I should say um, we can use uh, not equals as a as a exclusive or. Yeah, so I just quickly wanted to plug this, even though it's still under development. So Corgi is um, a SpaceMax-ish Emacs config, but it's uh, much more minimal than SpaceMax, and it's more optimized for closure usage. Uh, and I'm planning to really push it towards a first release uh, over the Christmas and New Year's holidays. Um, Okay, so this should be our entry okay. Um, yeah, make sure I do this right. Is that is that enough? Did I not make any 
domestics. Four oh four. Password not found. Submit. That's the right answer. All right. Well, I guess we're done for today. Uh, just kind of curious. Uh, yeah, 600 milliseconds. That is totally acceptable. I mean, yesterday, a lot of people were already talking about, you know, like how to do this in limited complexity, et cetera, et cetera. So if you go back to the, the, the thing from yesterday, um, I don't know how long my solution from yesterday took. I don't know, 200. Oh yeah, so today's actually 0.6 milliseconds, uh, not even so, yeah, whereas yesterday's was 200 milliseconds. Okay, that's uh, already a bit. Um, but I, I really just, I mean, we're going to have plenty of opportunity for, you know, like optimizing stuff in a couple of days. I'm sure I remember from past years that, you know, my first solution would, would literally take hours or days would just, you know, not be viable. Um, and then, yeah, you need to start getting into the weeds. Um, so I, I'm really just not going to go there yet, even though there's, there's some obvious ways to improve or make my solution from yesterday faster. Um, yeah. We'll get there soon enough. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what tomorrow brings. <laughs>